Hello and welcome to the presentation for Carstens and my paper on skeleton abstraction for universal temporal properties. To motivate the concept of skeleton abstraction a little bit, let us consider the group of people. As you can see on the picture, they are really diverse. And if we imagine to be a doctor and need to do an anamnesis for all of these people, it would be very inefficient to um, analyze all of these people by themselves with a different method each. Um, gladfully, there's some kind of abstraction method, the X-ray, which generates us the skeleton of these people, which is basically the same, so that we can use the same analysis method for the skeleton. It does not matter which skeleton it is. Based on the skeleton, we can detect some sort of arthrosis maybe, or we can talk about how old the person is. But not all of the properties of the person are detectable in the skeleton. For example, if we want to talk about the hair color, this would not be possible just by looking at the skeleton. This concept we now want to bring to the colored petri nets. Here you can see three colored petri nets which differ in their um, distribution of the color tokens on the upper place and um, in their guards. They all have different guards. But they have one thing in common and this is the place transition structure. They have the same number of places, the same number of transitions and the same arc weights. So, so if we um, build the skeleton, we just remove the colors from the token and we remove the guards from the transitions. So all of these three nets have the same skeleton. We want to use the skeleton for answering questions about ACTL star properties. The goal is to verify ACTL star property in the skeleton and transfer the result of the verification back to our underlying colored petri net. This sounds easy and we will soon see that this is not so easy as it sounds. So this leads us to the first question. When and why do problems occur with the skeleton abstraction? I don't want to get too technical here, but there are some concepts I would like you to know to understand the problem here a little bit better. The colored petri net and uh, its skeleton are related through a net morphism. This is the relation on the net level, on the node structure. This preserves reachability and thus is inducing an abstraction relation. This abstraction relation relates states which fulfill their atomic propositions equally and this is a relation on the reachability graph. A special kind of abstraction relation is the simulation relation and this is exactly the relation which we need for ACTL preservation. So if we want to verify in the skeleton and then transfer our result to the colored petri net, we need to guarantee that we have a simulation between the two reachability graphs. So the question here is, is the net morphism between the colored net and the skeleton inducing this simulation relation directly? And the answer is no. So this is not that easy. There is some problem and the problems are caused by the deadlocks which a net can have. To understand the problem a little bit better, uh, let us consider our initial example again. As you can see, the only transition in our colored petri net requires the tokens of the upper place to be all the same. So this is not the case here, so this transition is not enabled. If we look at the reachability graph, which you can find below, we only have one state, which is the deadlock state and it's followed by a self-loop labeled with a um, silent transition um, with tau so that we create an infinite path. Um, building the skeleton for this colored petri net, we see easily that the transition T here is enabled because the number of tokens is sufficient here. So T can fire and if we consume these tokens from the um, places, we reach the state where no tokens are in the net anymore. This is then a deadlock state. What's the problem now with the simulation relation? As I mentioned before, the simulation relation always needs to preserve the transition relation between related states. This state of the colored petri net is related to the first state of the skeleton net. And if we now want to preserve the transition relation, 
the only transition here we have is the self-loop. So if the simulation relation would be correct, we would find a self-loop here as well, which is not the case, because the only outgoing transition we have in the 3-1 state is labeled with T, um, which means T can fire, and then we get into the state 0, 0. So there is no transition relation which we have here. So we see a deadlock which is not preserved in the skeleton destroys the simulation, which leads us to the following question. Is this skeleton abstraction applicable? And for which type of net it is applicable? Or maybe um, for which formula type it is applicable? Okay, let's have a look. We distinguish now first the net type. For net deadlock free nets, the problem with the deadlock might not occur because we don't have deadlocks. So therefore, the relation between the reachability graph of the colored net and the skeleton net is a simulation relation. This is good for us because then we can transfer the ACTL star results from the skeleton to the colored petri net. Okay, so this case is easy. Let's go to the next case. We call them deadlock preserving, which means basically that every deadlock in the color petri net has a dead skeleton image. So every deadlock is preserved in the skeleton as well. There are two different kinds of deadlocks in a um, color petri net. And the first kind is caused by a wrong number of token, so an insufficient number of token. These deadlocks are not the problem because an insufficient number in the colored net is as well insufficient in the skeleton because the number we don't change. We just decolorize the tokens, but we don't take anything away or add something. So these deadlocks are not the problem. The problems occur because of the wrong distribution of the color. As we can see in our initial example again, the guard um, wants the tokens to be all the same in the upper place, which is not the case here. But the number is um, correct. As we see, the transition is activated in the skeleton. So this is a deadlock which is not preserved and exactly these deadlocks cause the problems. So if we can guarantee that we don't have these kind of deadlocks in the colored net, we are safe. So a positive example would be the little colored net on the right side. I just changed the guard. The guard is now a little bit more permitting. Um, it allows the transition to be activated if all three colors are the same, if two of them are the same, or if just one token is the same color, which is some kind of trivia. So if we can guarantee that we only have deadlocks which are preserved, then we can guarantee the simulation relation and then we um, are safe with the transfer of our ACTL star properties. This result of the deadlock preserving skeletons is not ours. It is from Greg Findlow, I think around the 90s. Um, our contribution here is the implementation and detecting whether um, a transition has these permittive guards for every color distribution. The next case is the deadlock injection. If the net has deadlocks but is not deadlock preserving, we need to modify the skeleton net a little bit. So uh, let us consider again our initial example. We built the initial skeleton as we know it, but then for one of the pre-places of the transition, which is not preserved, we add a second consuming transition T prime and uh, a complement place so that this transition T prime can consume the token from this pre place and produces it onto the complement place. By firing the transition T prime, we deactivate transition T and we some how simulate this deadlock of the color petrinet but with a little delay the delay is caused by firing transition t prime the method with the deadlock injection does not preserve the whole simulation relation it just preserves a 
kind of simulation relation, namely the stuttering simulation relation, which allows us to transfer properties of the ACTL star minus x. So we can verify formulas which are not using the next step operator. This was basically it for all of the net types. So we have a method for either deadlock-free nets or nets with deadlocks. They might have a deadlock preserving skeleton. If not so, we inject those deadlocks artificially. The safety properties have a special role in this thing of um, skeleton abstraction. Safety properties refer to the whole behavior of the whole system. So we don't have the X operator, for example. And the abstraction relation is sufficient here because we don't talk about the transition relation. It is sufficient just to talk about the states. So we might just have the abstraction relation, but for the safety properties, this is sufficient to verify them in the skeleton net and transfer them to the colored net. So this is the application field of the skeleton abstraction. If we know about the net type or we know about the formula type, we can apply the skeleton abstraction method really good to our colored petri net. Yeah, but this is not enough for us because we want to extend the um, field of application a little bit, which leads us to the next question. Can we expand them to normal place transition nets? Because sometimes we have really big place transition nets and by folding and then decoloring them, we um, generate a much smaller place transition net, which is somehow related to our original place transition net. Therefore, we implemented a folding procedure for uniform place transition nets. This procedure takes the place transition net, as you can see here, and folds it into a colored Petri net. Within this procedure, the places of the net become the color tokens of the colored net, and the transition of the net become the firing modes of the colored net. So we get a much smaller net, which we can then um, decolorize and get the skeleton net, on which we can then do our analysis. As we know that the reachability graph of a place transition net and its um, folding are isomorphic, we can transfer results from the skeleton net back to our initial Petri net. Last but not least, we want to talk about the performance of the skeleton abstraction method. We want to find out if the skeleton abstraction is a valuable um, addition for our model checking portfolio. Therefore, we did some experiments based on the model checking contest of 2019. The model checking contest contains of uncolored place transition nets and colored Petri nets. So we have a mixture of both of the types and we first found out that the skeleton is not always applicable to all of these nets and not to all of these formula we have. The skeleton is especially not applicable if the formula is not an ACTL star. So this is um, the case from time to time. Sometimes the formula does not contain um, temporal operators at all. So for these types of formula um, the skeleton abstraction is not applicable. Also, the skeleton is not applicable when um, the folding procedure for place transition nets does not really have an impact on the size of the net. If um, we fold always with regard to the formula, so for every formula we generate a new color Petri net. And sometimes the folding does not really have an impact on the size and if this is so um, we don't do the skeleton abstraction but we found out that if the skeleton um, abstraction is applicable it is re responsible for every third result we generate and this is kind of remarkable I think because our um, portfolio contains a lot of um, methods for the analysis um, and generating every third result is really remarkable I think. The second result is that we are now able to solve um, unsolved tasks 
which nobody has ever solved so far. Um, we are now able to generate around 200 brand new results, um, which are basically colored nets where the unfolding is too huge to handle. And with the skeleton abstraction, we can just do the skeletal analysis, which is much smaller, and this leads us to the new results. 200 may not sound like a big number um, in comparison to the already solved formulas, but we always have to keep in mind that um, over 80% of all formulas are already solved, and um, closing the gap to the 100% of solved results, um, 200 is a step in the right direction here. We did not implement all of our thoughts by now, um, for example, the deadlock injection is not implemented so far. By doing this, we hopefully get other new results soon. So these two positive results make the skeleton abstraction a really valuable addition to our model checking portfolio. It is most suitable for colored nets with a huge unfolding, as I already said. Most of the new results are these kind of nets and it is as well really good on regular symmetrical place transition nets and formulas. So um, these are the special case where the skeleton abstraction performs really, really good. So next to our other methods, it is a really good addition. To finish this presentation, I want to um, highlight the main contributions as well. First, we talked about the problems which might occur with the skeleton abstraction. So um, talking about the skeleton abstraction, we always need to think about the problems with the simulation relation caused by the deadlocks, so that the simulation relation is not always induced by the net morphism we have. Secondly, we have a situation application um, for deadlock free nets, for deadlock preserving nets. If we don't have these two cases, we have to inject the deadlocks. Special cases always the safety properties, which make this whole analysis a little bit more easier. Um, we can as well extend the scope of application. By our folding procedure, we make the skeleton abstraction um, applicable for uniform place transition nets. And the last question was if the skeleton abstraction is really a valuable addition for our model checking portfolio. And the answer to this is yes, the positive results and especially the new generated results lead us to this answer. So hopefully you liked our little insight on skeleton abstraction and I'm looking forward to our discussion on the conference.